Oh, 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 A good story is made when there is courage to seek the impossible. There's persistence against failure. And there's humility in the face of defeat. This is one of the greatest stories of any team in Valorant Esports. This is the story of Apex. In 2023, the competitive system for Valorant had changed. 30 teams would be competing in three international leagues, the VCT leagues. The VCT would be considered the playground for the highest level of competition in the world. Every professional and semi-professional player wants to compete in those leagues. But of course, not everyone can. Thankfully for all of those in pursuit of this goal, a part of VCT was also created. Every year, one single team would be promoted via Ascension, which would host the strongest teams from each of the subregions. The journey towards Ascension begins from the Challenger Leagues. And this was no different from our heroes of today's story. Even by looking at the player names, it was evident Apex had built a super team. Enzo, Mystic, and Magnum, three out of the five players, made their name by playing for Fnatic, one of the strongest teams in the history of Valorant Esports. While the other two players, Shadow and Kiko, did not fall short either. Shadow being a consistent performer throughout his career, and Kiko being one of the greatest young prospects in Northern European Valorant. The very start of Apex, the goal was to reach Ascension and win the whole thing. And qualify for VCT next year. We had something special going on within the team because we were just all like super fun with each other and happy to be, play, be playing with each other. I knew that we were going to be a really strong team just purely off the vibes. I've never had a team that, that was that special. While the squad that Apex put together looked quite serious, their intentions really shone when we found about their investment in coaching staff. Not only do they have their head coach Itopata with already an impressive record in the MEA, he had the help of assistant coaches and analysts Danito and Forrest and a performance coach, Peter Valderhoek. We, we needed to make sure we have enough enough people on the job and we ended up with a, uh, with a football team. I do believe that Itopata is one of the main reasons why I stepped up so much as an IGL. I brought an idea, I brought a playstyle uh, with the team and he did everything in his power to make it work, you know? Bro, we are born on the same day. You know what I mean? Like, it's 12th of June, both of us, so... I don't know, we had some similarities that were a little bit uh, crazy sometimes. A little bit scary sometimes. Uh, like we get into a room together and we say the exact same sentence at the same time. Like you have the two voices over each other and we say the same words. Like, but why, you know? And that happened many times. And it's like, okay guys, Coach IGL is supposed to be a symbiosis, but not to this point where you say the same stuff. Like what's going on, you know? It all looked fantastic. But things weren't that simple. You've just announced the strongest on paper team in the region. With that, you've put a target on your back and anything other than victory and ascension would be considered a failure. Uh, there was a lot of uh, attention brought to us. I mean, I mean, on paper, if you look at the players like me, Enzo and Magnum, have, we've been there before, right? The most pressure I think was like from the expectations from everyone, you know, because you need to be on point. You need to be at your best every time. Everyone's expecting us to like dominate and play well and win. Just, you know, sometimes if you lose a map against someone you're not supposed to, it's like, everyone's like, oh, they're throwing, they're throwing for money, you know? So it's like, I think uh, we all, we all tried to up, like step it up and uh, play as best as we could, you know? And there was a long way to go with plenty of margin for error. And when only one out of the 86 teams can qualify into VCT, the odds are never in your favor. And it was like scary because like the first split, even if you won that one, you needed to win the second one as well. So you had to like, yeah, for sure be the best team, without a doubt. I think you cannot look at the Ascension like there's a one winner, because uh, that's just gonna make you demotivated, because it's really hard to accept that fact. So I think you just need to take it step by step and focus on the short goals. And if you do, do that correctly, it should develop into into the ultimate goal of winning Ascension. It's not about odds, it's not about ch chances, it's not about probability, it's about what you do. And so the season begun. And their first stop? The Northern European Challenger League, also known as Polaris. When the team was finalized, so early January, we kicked off with a bootcamp. Uh, thanks to Apex, they allowed us to come into a bootcamp so that we can see each other. 
it was a very smooth process in the first boot camp. It was an amazing experience, to be honest, and it was very productive as well. You need to work on your fundamentals, on your compositions, on your reactions, on the basic protocols that you're going to use throughout the whole year. Yeah? And that's super important. Having the will to work on the basics first allowed us to be very good from the start. When I watched the trials that we did, everyone were a little bit quiet, you know, during trials when nobody knows each other. But as soon as we went on the boot camp, like uh, especially Shadow, he was just a different person, you know, he was started singing all the time. It was super funny. I think in his words, he didn't want us to think he was a weirdo, so we don't pick him up. But <laughs> as soon as he signed, he turned into something else, bro. He was like a jester. Like he's dancing and uh, singing all the time. And like this guy is like, this is a guy is a completely different person. And like all of us loved it. Uh, first ever official against uh, Human Tripwires, I think. They took us to OT on Ascent. And like, it was so hectic. Went insanely rough. I remember that we almost lost it. Yeah, you can tell it was first official vibes from everyone. As soon as we won the first map and we went on the second and we destroyed them, we knew that uh, we have something special here and, you know, we needed the first map just to, you know, get used to the official vibe because everyone was not playing official for like four or five months already. And the competition in Pilaris wasn't easy. Other teams were pushing Apex to the limit, and specifically Focus, a team which had beaten Tier 1 Titans Cloud9 in the offseason, would not leave them alone. So each time we've played Focus, it, it felt much, much harder to play them. Uh, we played them so many times. We played them so many times, and our goal was to be one step ahead of them every time. If one of these games we didn't change anything, if we did not adapt to potential new things they have prepared, if we didn't, didn't evolve and step up as a team, we would have lost these games. Honestly, we would have lost. But we had to be one step ahead of focus at all times, and that kept us super competitive. Okay, there has to be time where they're gonna beat us. And you beat them six times, seven times, and there is a question. For sure they need to beat you once, right? And to no one's surprise, focus was Apex's contender in the grand final of Polaris. A match which would guarantee one of the teams' qualification to Ascension. And Apex persevered, just like every single time they had so far. Apex will find it back to back. The brightest in Borealis and Aurora befitting of the international stage. The road wasn't over for Focus. They had one more chance to qualify to Ascension. But the way to get there, they had to beat every other second place team of the rest of the challenger leagues in the region to see if they can grab that final spot. I mean, like in my heart, I didn't want to face them again, but I was just sure, you know, that uh, they will do it. And guess what? They did. I think, I think, I think, well, we beat them six times or something in total this year. And they were like, yes, finally, we beat them in the finals. No more focus. Can't, can't be asked to play them and their play style. They're super annoying to play against. And then, oh, we might have to play them again. For God's sake, you know. <laughs> and I think they won in a pretty convincing way. Uh, I mean, they, they stepped up. I could see some changes in their gameplay. And and they qualified, and, and to us, it proved something. It proved that our region was actually super competitive, and we and Focus is actually a good team. Ascension is now the battleground, and all of a sudden, there are a lot more teams that you have to be worrying about. All the teams that went to Ascension were really good teams. I think our biggest competitor, we felt like it's going to be Ascent, then Gentle Mates and Focus. And we actually had uh, two of them plus us in, in the same group. The group stage seemed like a breeze for Apex, winning every single one of their matches. And together with Ascent, another super team from the Eastern European League, Saw, a Portuguese team with unbelievable performances, and the French team Gentlemates, they all qualified for playoffs. 
In playoffs, the teams now had to compete in Berlin, at the arena where VCT EMEA takes place, in the Coliseum. And for the first time this year, they could now play in front of a crowd. I remember that first day, you, you get into the venue, the first thing you see is usually the warm-up room. You get into the room, you see the PCs, it, it looks like a, a normal boot camp. You have some sofas in the middle to chill and everything, and then you look at the wall and you have the team logos of, of, of all the VCT teams, and you're like, that's interesting, maybe we could have our logo added there, you know, as a team, that would be fun. I think everyone was just super hyped to play, finally, you know, everything this year, all the seven months have been leading up to this point. You know, all those hours of grinding, six hours, eight, ten hours a day, had finally led up to that game. I mean, it was just like happiness because for me, it's like, oh, I'm back. I'm finally back on the stage, you know. I just felt so much of excitement to, to be there. First match against Saw. Success. 2-0 victory. And now, time for the upper bracket final. Winner goes to the grand final. The loser drops to the lower bracket for their final chance. Their match was against Ascent. I think Ascent throughout the whole year was supposed to be our um, our paired competitor, you know, because these were the two teams that assembled like super, super teams uh, in Tier 2 to achieve the goal of reaching VCT. There was this rivalry with uh with Ascent that was going on since the beginning. Like, obviously we try out the same players. We both wanted to build kind of the same rosters, but uh, we were fortunate enough most of the players to end up uh, with us. And many of the players that uh, were on their team, um, they, they were tried out by us as well, and they did not end up on, on Apex. So obviously there was uh, some some personal uh, feelings uh, in, the, in uh, that team. I ate. What a play! I mean, Ascend, that's how you rotate against them, even if he doesn't kill everyone on the site. Look at this man, he, he knows what he's doing. I think falling into place on them. Oh. But it shows you a different look, right? Attempt for another time, but no diffusers going this way. Apex undefeated! Roll up to the grand finals, awaiting for the final challenge. One step away! EMEA. We played really good versus Ascent, and it was like I, after the game, I just thought to myself, "Okay, this is it. We got this." You know, uh, we are playing good, we are preparing good. Everyone are on the same page. No way, we got. You know, we're gonna win it. Now, Ascent had to play against gentlemates in the lower bracket and to most people's disbelief they couldn't shut down the french players we expected ascent to win and we weren't really prepared for the outcome that gentlemates were going to win and we we're going to have like 150 gentlemates fans screaming at us you know the next day what uh, scared us the most was hearing their crowd cheering for them because yeah, it was uh, it was wild. Like uh, we, we were practicing and your whole table is shaking as soon as they win the round i think we practiced them, them so many times, like during this year. We just practiced them a lot, and uh, I think we might have won like 90% of every uh, prac <laughs> that we played against them. I don't think we thought it was easier, but I think we thought it would be like a good match for us as well. Like we would have uh, some like good plans against them. We were feeling really good. loss we just lost everything i remember mistake slamming the the table to my right like right really really hard i've never seen him like that upset before and it was 
it really put it into perspective like what had happened and it was just I, I felt like so super zoned out I think I just couldn't believe it that's what happened I think some of us in the team we looked at each other and we we're like what happened you know yeah I don't think anyone could believe it the, the hardest thing is that it's all or, or nothing and it's like everything you've done for this year is gone like it's it just gone so I was not angry not sad not happy not nothing I was I was just like what happened you know then then Ato came up on stage and I think um he, he like he took me and he was like he was. He said it was okay. It will be okay. And I think I think I, I I burst out crying then. You need to know that our practice history against gentlemates, we played them 16 times throughout the year, and we beat them 16 times. And most of the games, they don't win more than four rounds. Yeah, that's what happened. And they get into the finals against us and they're like, okay, here we go again, guys. But this time they, they played to, to win and they, they played with their guts. They did it the French way, you know? <laughs> so yeah, congratulations to them. They deserve it. Part of me was like, yeah, I'm happy for them, you know? But obviously I'm upset because, you know, we, 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 we put all of this work in for, what, six, seven, eight months or whatever. And just for it to fall short at the last final hurdle, it really did suck. I think a lot of us just uh, came off that stage crying and uh, tearing up and, you know, realizing that, like, this is a... Uh, this was a big moment for the team and probably it potentially one of the last moments uh, together. Enzo, Palm as always, didn't look like he had any emotions. That's about it. Well, you know, I, I could tell that it hurt him a lot because... We, we we really wanted to go together next year, like the whole team, because it was such a, like a family, the org, the team. I remember after that loss, we went one by one, everyone in the room, in the huddle room, like coaches, staff, content people, like, uh, like how they felt the year went and how they appreciated it and stuff. So it, it got quite emotional. We gathered in, in we gathered in the room and and. Um... And that was just a, a team moment. We have we had these team moments throughout the whole year. It's just that this one, instead of being a hype up moment or a, just a special moment, it was it was it was a goodbye moment, basically. I felt that uh, we lost our special thing that we had, that we can evolve if we won that game. We mostly said our goodbyes. Honestly, it was uh, it was pretty heartbreaking, but it is it is what it is. Honestly. Yeah, we were based team on a lot of jokes. So after 20 minutes, we are just we started already joking about it. It's like especially me and Ito, we are like, yeah, Magnum, see you, see you at uh, September, rebuilding the team once again. <laughs> I think I, I moved on from this loss super fast. I moved on from this loss extremely fast, uh, just a few hours. What matters is you have to play, and play to win, and play without regrets. That's what I do. And the way I played, the things we did, I cannot afford to have regrets afterwards. So I cannot, I, I have experienced this before. And uh, I th like, honestly, either you're in game and you play to win. And in the end, after that, you have no regret. And you're like, okay, we won, we lost, but at least I played and I gave my best. And you move on to the next one. I felt like the environment we had was something special, to be honest. I think that we had such positive, like a workspace and everything, that environment that we created was really, really something. And it was something that hopefully that on my next team that we can recreate. You shouldn't just really give up after a loss like this, you know? I feel like, I feel like Coming away from that whole experience, I learned that I my love for the game of Valorant is like is is grown. If anything, you know, it's um it's 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 just made me even more hungry to continue, you know, and uh, really advance in my career and you know hopefully for the other boys too. And who knows, maybe one day we see each other again. It's sad memory, but nice one, you know, like uh, which brings a. Uh positive emotions uh, after some time.
like now I now I know now I know things work. Uh, I can rely on them. I can I can recreate it again and and with the next iteration of the roster. So that's the that's the good lesson. And uh, I would say the bad lesson is don't underestimate momentum in in the Valorant because uh, it's uh, it's pretty devastating when you're up against it. You know, hopefully we reunite one day and uh, we will get get to play again with each other, which was, yeah, which would be incredible. Yeah, next year we go again, guys. I'd go to war with those guys again. Every one of us dreamed to go to VCT. We couldn't make it this year, but I, I know that uh, sooner or later we will be there. <laughs>